Welcome to the Mischief. I'm Valen, and this is Vintage Story. Today I'm going to be teaching you a whole lot about cooking. We've got bowls, pots, and crocks. No, they're not the kind that you can wear on your feet. Bowls have more than just one use. It's not just going to be eating food out of. You can also use it for water. And as somebody had mentioned in one of the comments in an earlier video, you can actually use it to identify if it's fresh water or salt water. If it's salt water, it'll specifically say salt water in it. If you get water in a bowl, you can always drink it, or you can just hold control and right click it, and you'll dump the water out. This works for most liquid containment items, as there are also jugs you can make as well, which will hold three liters of any given liquid. But if I've actually done any hunting in the world, I might also find another use for a bowl besides food, and that is going to be my first permanent light source. By taking it plus a bit of fat in my uh, crafting grid, I can make an oil lamp. This will be my first permanent light source that will not actually go out. So you can also place it on walls on the side here, or you can just put it on the middle of a block by clicking on it. It doesn't work in quadrants because it's a light source, but you can place it down, and it is rather nice to have some level of light around your base. This is not actually going to stop drifter spawns, though, so keep that in mind. But at the very least, you can take it with you underwater and not worry about it going out. And on the downside, you cannot use it to actually light anything. So if you're, you've been using your torch to light things uh, in the past, this won't actually work like that. Now let's grab some of these items here and head over to a fire pit. Crocs are not actually going to be very useful in any kind of fire pit or cooking. This is merely a storing vessel. Instead, let's use a cooking pot. Let's say you've been out, you've been killing a lot of critters and you've got yourself a whole lot of raw red meat. Well, you can put this in a cooking pot and if you have enough of them, you'll need more than one, you can start cooking yourself a meal. And you can see here it says, we'll create one serving of red meat stew. Now, if you double this up, you now have two servings of red meat stew. You can triple it, quadruple it, quintuple it, even sextuple it. Yes, you can get it up to six servings of any given meal that you're making in the bowl and it will store six hefty stews now that doesn't mean that you have to stop with just two you can actually fill it up to four of any given material and probably get the uh the result of some kind of really big meal that's going to last you quite a bit now it's not just limited to single items so yes you can put grains in here and you'll get a porridge you can put meats in here and you'll get meat you can put vegetables in here and you'll get vegetables fruit mm, maybe not so much there's a lot of different recipes that you can look at if you go over to your guide section by pressing the h key and look up meal making this will really give you a good idea of how to do it but more importantly what types of foods you can actually make. Because right now you're looking at a very simple one, which is a red meat stew. This talks about vegetable stew, how the first two slots must be a vegetable. Optional additions are vegetables and soybeans. And yes, mushrooms are considered vegetables as well. Then you've got your porridge options, which the first couple slots must be grain and so on. Now, if I try taking something like another vegetable and replacing one of these raw red meats with it, it may or may not have an issue with it. You notice that I'm just add, switching out some of these ones. So if I take out this one, it then won't function. Well, why not? Why was it doing two before and not now? It's because you have to have certain minimums for certain types of foods. And this is why I point out this guide is because it really does give you the idea of, well, if you're having a struggle with trying to get something to work, this is how you can make it work. If you only have very limited resources, like in this case, I've got a carrot, that's not really going to do. But if you look here, we've got soup. The first two slots must be one water and one vegetable. Well, let me take my bowl over here, grab a little bit of water. Then I can take it up here and left click. And I got 0.1 liter of water. This is going to take me a little bit because I, I store one liter at a time of water in a bowl but once I get to that one liter it then says we'll create one serving of carrot soup which allows you to cook the carrot now if you look it is 100 saturation the water is not going to give you any at all but once it's complete you'll get this little cooked pot of food and you notice that the vegetable has gone up to 150 saturation instead of one of these blips of hunger it fills up one and a half now just by adding a little bit of 
nutrientless water because it's cooked food. So this is to encourage you to actually start cooking and making meals. Now, yes, it will actually have some kind of visual representation most of the time of whatever is in there. It may not be exact in all cases, but it's generally pretty good in most of them. And just by right clicking with the bowl that I have, I then get it in my bowl and I can start eating it myself. Once it's done though, I do need to take the cooking pot back, put it back in here, representing that it's going to be cooking once again. Now, if you have chickens, you can also use eggs straight up just being placed in here. And if you also have found some honeycomb or honey out in the world, or you've started harvesting bees, then you can start making some jam, which is a great way to get your fruit to stay high during the winter or cold months, considering that most fruit items will not be available to you or may have gone off. But to give an example, let's put two fruit in here, like it says, two blueberries, and then we're gonna take some of this, and I'm going to left click and it says two honey. Each honey is represented by a 0.2 liter portion. So there we go. This represents one serving of blueberry jam. Here's another thing you should be aware of while I'm making my blueberry jam is that sometimes you can't mix and match everything, but sometimes you can. In this case, red meat, vegetable, and fruit all in one. It all depends on the portions that you have, and if they're all the same amount of portions, and if you are following the guidelines for making a meal. This is going to make a really grand one here. So let's take a look at cooked meat. That's going to be 280 saturation. That's going to be 560 saturation for two of them. If you add in the carrot and the blueberry for a total, you would get 740 saturation for one serving of just individually cooking and eating these items. So once this is done cooking, it should give us a much greater result. And while I'm waiting for the different foods to actually cook, it looks like one of them has already finished, I'm going to show you a little bit of something on how you can get honey. Sometimes you'll find honeycomb in loot containers, and in the future, uh, in a future episode, I will be showing you how to use and harvest honey from bees and such. But for now, just know that if I put down a, uh, a bowl, and I sneak right click honeycomb over top of that, I will then put that into the bowl. So it now has 0.2 liters of honey in it. And in my inventory, I got some beeswax. But this is important because beeswax is going to be very useful later on. But for now, it's also going to be used with crocs. Now you notice that this one is finished cooking, so the lid has popped open. That one, still going. Though it's very nearly there, it should complete at any moment. There we go. And you can actually see that we've got meat, blueberries, and carrots. Now if I take one of these crocs, this is actually going to be a pretty good way of storing things for the future. If I put this in a bowl, it's going to actually stay there for a certain amount of time, 46.7 days. If I take a crock, in this case I have the this open so you can see that it's still in that spot, but I just need to right click on it. I can now place the crock in here and you can see it says one serving of blueberry jam and crock. Now it doesn't have a timeline for how long it lasts because it's still hot. Once it's started cooling off a bit, it will then give you a timeline. And quite often you can use that to be stored in uh, like underground cellars and such like that. Now if I go over here to this one, you'll notice that it has six servings. That only has one in it. If I take one of these other crocks and I click on here, I now have four servings stored in a crock. So I find quite often that it's best to make two six serving meals and click on them with three crocks, if you follow me. Because I can take another crock, click on this and get two more servings. And if it's the same stuff in another pot that's cooking or immediately after, and it's the exact same order and everything, you can actually combine them together and just click on it again and get all of those servings into the same crock thus allowing you to have them stored as well. Now you see here, we can start storing these. There's shelves and things like that that you can put them on, but that's for future us to look at. But you will notice that I have beeswax and a lump of fat. Lumps of fat obviously are from animal drops. Beeswax are from what I just showed you there with the honey. But if I take some of these like this or this, the four servings here with this one, and you'll notice that it says protein 840 vegetable 150 and fruit 120. If you recall, we were only doing a total of all of those individual items cooked before of 740. So in this case, we're getting 
a considerable increase in the amount of saturation on our hunger bar from eating this meal. But if I take one of these, combine it with a lump of fat, I'm now sealing it. You'll notice that it doesn't say it now, but if I look down here in the green it says sealed. That's going to allow it to last a lot longer, specifically even more so if it's downstairs in a cellar. Now fired crock, I can also use that with some beeswax and do the exact same thing. But I'm going to leave this one out just so that we can have it for comparison's sake. And some of these labels will actually change according to what the items are, but if it's unsure it just defaults to this little mixed bowl icon. Okay, so here we go. Looking at the ground storage here of the blueberry jam that I had made, about 41 to 42 days, because uh, it took me a little bit to make this second bowl, but it'll take me about 40 to 42 days. If I look at this one with blueberry jam in it, it's 52 days for it to actually last. So it's going to last even longer. Then once I seal this up, pow, it lasts for 4.1 years. Jam is one of the best storage items that there are out there for any kind of fruit storage, and I can't really complain about that. 4.1 years, as long as it stays sealed. When you're ready to open these, you just place it down, grab an empty bowl, in that case, let me just empty some of that myself, and then click on it, and you can see it breaks the seal and goes into my bowl. And it's back to being ready at 44 days in the bowl. Don't worry, it's not going to instantly spoil if you take it out of there and it's less. It's just saying that you'll have that much because you're in a new container from its previous lifespan. Now something also you should be aware of is that when you start eating some of these really complete meals instead of uh, like munching on the occasional carrot or piece of grain or something like that, you'll start getting what I like to refer to as a bit of a food coma, where your hunger meter will actually stay in place once you've got it full and not actually drop for some time. And it depends on the meal that you've chosen for yourself. But if you also notice here, I have these two items. They're both exactly the same thing. Just one has a couple more servings. That actually doesn't have any relation as to how long it takes for this stuff to spoil. One of them is going to last for 52 and a half days. The other one's gonna last for five and a half days. Can you guess which one has been sealed? If you're not sure which one is which, just pick one up and you can always see which one you've got. Now here's the thing, I have plenty of space left. The food is not wasted. You have decimal points of the food that you're going to be eating. So you can come back and eat this in the future. Don't be afraid to put it in different storages as well. By putting in a storage vessel, you can see here it says 5.1 days. Putting it there, it may or may not help. Now remember, when you look at a storage vessel, it says vegetables, it helps. Grain, it doesn't. And others, it will actually make it expire sooner. So you're going to want to keep that in mind. Now if it's in a cellar, then you'll probably have a much better chance of it lasting a lot longer. But as it's just sitting out here in the open, the sun is on it, it's just baking in the sun. Real briefly, if you desire to make yourself one of these clay ovens, just know that when you first start making one, unless you have access to a saw, you can only make and harvest from the clay oven one of the two different types of food types. That being bread. Uh, you can actually make it from different kinds of grains. If you make yourself a quern, as I've shown one of these before in the past, you just put a little bit of some grain. In this case, I've got sunflower grain, which are really just sunflower seeds. You hold it with a right click and it will grind the item up into flour. You can take some kind of water storage device, get it with some water, and then you can combine it with a bit of flour and you'll get yourself sunflower dough in this case. Now it doesn't have to be sunflower, it can be just about any of the other grains. You make yourself some dough and you just need a little bit of firewood to start this off. You just right click one of these clay ovens. No, you don't need to actually fire these clay ovens when you first make them. You just make them raw and they automatically turn into this because you're going to be baking in it. It's considered to be already fired. Once you've got some wood in there, you just hold right click with a burnable item like a torch or a fire starter. Then you just wait for the firewood to disappear. You'll notice at the top that the temperature of the clay oven is going up. This is going to be your baking temperature for your dough. Now I did say that there are two different items that you can bake in here. One is bread. The other is going to be pies. You cannot make pies unless you already have some kind of table. You can either make it with a saw or find one in one of the ruins out in the world. 
but then you take some of the dough that you have, sneak, right click, and you'll make yourself a pie base. It's going to be similar to the bowl where you're going to have some exceptions on how you can actually make these, but just know that you can only use one type of item. In this case, it's going to be some kind of protein meat, So, you, but you can mix things like red meat and fish. You can mix uh, different kinds of vegetables. You can mix different kinds of berries, but you cannot mix them across to a different uh, type. And keep in mind that the pie crust itself counts for grain. Look at the top of the screen. It says 480 saturation. But you just need to right click and you can fill it up with whatever it is. Then you can add a topper to it if you desire or cook it as it is. If you want, you just click on it with some more dough and then voila, you have a top. You can pick it up and so on. Now in this case, if I still had some more dough, I can just right click some more and I can change the pattern on top. It's not gonna actually change anything except the aesthetics. It's just gonna make it prettier. So we can make a meat pie with crosshatch pattern on top. Lovely. This is already up to temp. So let me put the pie in there and we can start baking it. Now if you watch over time, the pie or bread will actually start to rise in the little oven. It's pretty darn immersive if I do say so myself. But you're going to want to keep a close eye on it because if it starts cooking for too long, you could char your food. doesn't mean that it's inedible, it just means that it's not going to be quite as good as it was before. And if you look at the top there it says red meat pie part baked. So you're going to want to make sure that that just drops off any kind of part baked option and then you're good. There we go. It is ready. I take it out. I can put it down on a table. And this is why you need the tables is because if you don't have a table, you can't make pies. Take yourself a knife and you can actually slice a pie piece and take it with you. If it's the same type of pie and not too old or anything like that, you can just keep on slicing it and stack it in groups of four. It's pretty good. As before with the bowls, if you eat part of one, if you eat one and you still have some left over, you'll still have the red meat pie in here and it will say that the uh, serving is just like a reduced amount. But it will separate itself from the stack because it's got a different quantity value. Now these being available, let's put in some of these bread doughs here and we can make some sunflower loaves. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to let one cook to completion and I'm going to let the other one actually burn. There we go. This one here is part baked. If I take one of these out, it's still edible. It's going to have 150 saturation as is. Now that that one's completed, I can have a look at that one and it's going to give me 300 saturation and it's going to last a little bit longer. Now these ones are also completed, but instead I'm going to wait for these ones to kind of get a little too toasty. There we go. Kind of looks like a little bit of a fruit loaf in a way, but I now have charred bread. It's the same as if you were to take some raw dough and stick it into a fire pit. Now there's pluses and minuses to this. The plus is that it lasts a lot longer. It's more than double that of the regular sunflower bread, but the uh, saturation is going to be very much reduced. It's not as bad as the part baked bread, but it is going to be a lot less than if it were cooked to completion normally. So if you need some longer term grain items, this could actually do pretty good. Especially if you've got it in a cellar, extending its lifespan even further. Just be aware that any kind of storage method that you do choose to go with, if it's not in its ideal setup, i.e. down in a cellar, may end up spoiling your food faster or it just might have to wait a few moments for it to update the different kind of parish speeds. In this case, it's saying 1.42 parish speed on the shelf out here in the sun. So it's actually gonna spoil faster than if it were in your inventory. Food is very big, very important, and takes a bit of managing in order to get it right. But just know that if you are interested in checking out bees, food storage, metals, plenty of other things that I may have covered already or I'm yet to, please be sure to give a like, comment, subscribe and come back for more. Till next time folks, I'll see ya.